So as a reminder from the previous video, we're now able to find the probability of any event or outcome in an experiment by calculating the ratio between the number of successful outcomes, successful meaning our event criteria is satisfied, divided by the number of total outcomes in the experiment. And we found these outcomes by using either tree diagrams, tables, or simply finding patterns to list all the possible outcomes. Now this approach is not wrong and will always be successful. The only problem is what happens when you have an experiment that is either too complex and so there's too many outcomes. And if you wanted to list all of them, it would take way too much time, or you can forget a couple outcomes, rendering your result incorrect. Or it's hard to even begin finding a pattern to list all the possible outcomes. In both these cases, we're going to have to resort to the counting rules we saw in an earlier video. And so for the remainder of this video, there's not much new content to learn, but rather how we apply the counting rules. So this includes permutations, combinations, the MN rule, etc. So this video is going to focus on examples on how to apply all these calculations or these patterns to probability problems. So our first question consists of a bowl containing a variety of M&Ms, five of which are yellow, three being red, and eight are green. We pull out three of them, so we have n distinct steps. We want to know what the probability is of selecting two yellows and a green. So out of the three that we pull, we want two of them to be yellow and one of them to be green. It's really important to note here that the order in which these guys are pulled is not specified. So order is irrelevant. So whether I pick the green first, followed by two yellows, or pick two yellows first, followed by the green, all of those count as successful simple events or successful outcomes. And the question also tells us to assume that we don't place the M&Ms back into the bowl before selecting again. So what this means is that we have a non-replacement experiment. So imagine we have our bowl with our different M&Ms inside. We're going to start out with 16 M&Ms. We're going to pull one out. On our second pull, we're only going to have 15 M&Ms left. And the one we just pulled out is no longer a possible outcome. Then in our third pull, the first two that we pulled is no, are no longer outcomes, and so forth. So the probabilities of pulling different M&Ms on successive trials changes. So just to repeat the question, we want to know the probability that we have two yellows, one green. So we have three trials. Our possible outcomes that count here are yellow, yellow, green, or yellow, green, yellow, or green, yellow, yellow. So this would be the way we would usually solve the problem. So we'll solve it this way first, and then we'll look at the simpler method involving combinations. So if we use this first method, and we say this event one, this event two, this event three, all of these three outcomes are satisfying our criteria for this probability since each of them has two yellows and one green and we can tell that this is all the possible outcomes since the green occupies all possible spots that it could occupy out of the three total spots so in the first simple event the probability is pulling the first as being yellow our first selection has to be yellow so we have five yellows in the bowl out of 16 total M&Ms. Then we multiply that by the probability of pulling out a second yellow. So we have four remaining yellows in the bowl since we just pulled out a yellow M&M. 
divided by, since we just pulled out an M&M, we have 15 total M&Ms remaining in the bowl. Finally, we have to pull out a green M&M for our last selection. So we have eight greens remaining, divided by, since we just pulled out two M&Ms, we only have 14 M&Ms that remain. The probability of the second event is equal to the chance of pulling a yellow on the first try once again, so that's 5 out of 16, multiplied by the chance of pulling a green on the second try. So we have 8 total greens. We just pulled out an M&M, so we have 15 that remain. So that's going to be 8 out of 15, multiplied by the chance of pulling out a yellow on the last attempt. So we have 4 remaining yellows since we pulled one on the first try, divided by, we just pulled out 2 M&Ms, so we have 14 that remain. Then the probability of the third event is very similar. We pull a green on the first try. That's going to be 8 greens divided by 16 total M&Ms. Multiplied by the chance of pulling a yellow on the second try. We have 5 yellows that remain since we didn't pull out any yet. Divided by 15 M&Ms that remain since we pulled out a green in the first step. Finally, we multiply by the chance of pulling a yellow on the last attempt. So 4 yellows that remain divided by 14 total M&Ms. And if we actually plug this into our calculators, we'll find that the probability of each of these is going to come out to 1 over 21. So each one of these simple events satisfies the criteria for our event given in the question. And so either one, either simple event satisfies our total event. So this is an OR case. Our probability of two yellows and one green is equal to event one, so the probability of event one, or we can have event two, so we add it, plus probability of event two, or we can have event three, plus the probability of event three. So that's equal to three times one over 21, or if we reduce the fraction, one over seven. So, if we pull out three M&Ms without replacement, the probability of selecting two yellows followed by a green is equal to 1 over 7. So you can see that this is a bit lengthy. We had to find these three events. So if we made a mistake, if we didn't list one of these, our answer would be wrong. Then we had to go through and think about the entire process three times to find the probability each of each one of these events. So the easier way to do this question is using combinations. We have the probability of pulling two yellows and a green. We know that we don't care about the order that this is pulled in. So all we want is a combination in the three sets of two yellows and a green. That's all we care about. So this probability is going to equal how many ways we can select a single green M&M from eight total green M&Ms. So we have eight elements that are green, and we want to choose one of them. So how many ways we can do that? Multiplied by the ways we can choose two elements out of five to be yellow. So we have five yellow M&Ms. We're choosing two of them divided by the total number of ways that we can select three M&Ms from a total of 16. So we'll change colors here since we're not pulling green M&Ms. So our total M&Ms, we have 16, and we're choosing three of them. That's our total number of outcomes. So ways to select green, ways to select two yellows, and then total ways select three M&Ms. And if you put this in your calculator, you'll find that this comes out to eight possible ways to, to select a green M&M, multiplied by 10 possible ways to select two yellow M&Ms from a population of five, divided by 560 possible ways to select three M&Ms from a total of 16. 
And if we simplify this, it comes out to 1 over 7, just like the previous method. So our second question consists of an exam having five multiple choice questions. Each question has four options, and of the four, only one is correct. We want to know what the probability is of getting all five correct by guessing, and then we want to know the probability of getting four correct by guessing. So for part one, say part A, what is the probability of getting all five correct? So probability of five. So it's going to be number of ways to get 5 correct divided by the number of ways to answer the 5 questions. So this is essentially the total number of outcomes. It's going to be equal to, we have 5 questions, so we have 5 steps in this experiment. Each step has four possible outcomes. So we're going to have a total of four times four times four times four times four, or four to the power of five total outcomes, since each step has four options. And this is equal to 1,024. So that's the total outcomes, or total number of ways we can complete this exam. The number of ways we have five questions correct. So we can think about this logically. We have five questions. Each one has to be correct. So we have five pick five. So there's only one possible way that this can happen. Or the number of ways is you only have one option for the first question, followed by one option for the second question, followed by one option for the third question, and so on equals one possible way for you to select all five questions correctly. So in the end, we have P5 is equal to the number of ways that we get five correct, which is one, divided by the total number of ways to answer the five questions, which is 1,024. So that's the chance that you get all five questions correct simply by guessing. Now we want to know what is the probability of selecting four answers to be correct. So probability that we have four correct. Well, we, once again, we have five steps for this experiment, or five spots. Of these five spots, we want to choose four. We don't care which order they're in. It could be the first four. Maybe it's not the second one, but the last one. Maybe it's not the first one at all, but the rest. We just want to select four spots out of five to be correct or successful. So in this case, we don't care about order. We're going to use a combination. So the number of ways to choose four spots out of five as correct is five choose four, which is equal to five. So there's five ways we can guess for four of the answers to be correct. For these five ways, we have five possible ways. The chance has to be equal to we successfully guess four of the questions. So we have a one out of four chance since each question has four options and we get the correct option. So that's a one out of four chance to the power of four since we do it four times. So it's one out of four times one out of four times one out of four times one out of four. That corresponds to these guys. And then one of the answers is incorrect. So that's a 3 out of 4 chance, since we don't select the correct answer. This is equal to the probability of selecting 4 answers to be correct. And if you plug that into your calculator, you'll get a final answer of 15 over 4096. So the number of ways to get four answers correct by guessing is 15 over 4,096. The final question has Max, who's packing shirts for a trip. He has five total shirts. They consist of a pink shirt, a purple one, red, green, and orange. 
and he stacks four of them in his bag. So he has five shirts, but he only stacks four of them in his bag. We want to know the probability that within this stack, the red shirt comes directly before the orange one. So we imagine we have our stack that consists of four. A successful event would be having the red one and directly after that coming the orange one. So it doesn't have to be in the first spot. It could be in the middle, red, then orange, and it could be also at the end. Red followed by orange. So once again, the probability that we have red followed by orange is equal to the number of successful events divided by the number of total events. So our total in this case, we do care about order because we want the red shirt to come directly before the orange shirt. We don't want simply to have a set of four shirts where the red one is in there and the orange one is in there. We want them to come directly or they have to be together and specifically the red one has to be before the orange one. So we're going to use a permutation in this case since order matters. So order matters. We'll use a permutation. So the total number of ways from five shirts that we pick four is going to be five pick four, which you can plug into your calculator, or it's simply equal to five times four times three times two, which is 120 total ways that we can pick the four shirts out of the five, including having different orders. Now the number of ways where the red one comes directly before the orange one, we can consider the red and orange shirt coming in that order as a single element. So this is a single element. So now we that's two shirts. We have to select two more. So now we have three spots. Red and orange can assume the first spots, the middle spots, or the last spot. So essentially, we have three different possibilities here. We can have red followed by orange, then two shirts, or a shirt followed by red, which is directly followed by orange, followed by a shirt, or two shirts, then the red one, directly followed by the orange one. Now, for these two shirts over here, since we already selected the red and orange one, we only have a possibility of three shirts that remain, and we're picking two. Once again, the order still matters. So we pick two from three shirts, and so we have three outcomes multiplied by the probability, or the number of ways, that we pick two shirts from three. And if you plug that into your calculator, that'll be three times six, which is equal to 18. So the number of ways we can select the shirts such that the red one is directly followed by the orange one is 18 possible ways. So the probability in this case is gonna equal 18 successful events divided by 120 total events, which in decimal form is equal to 0.15. So there's a 15% chance that he stacks them such that the red one is directly followed by the orange one.